Hello, welcome. I'm Jan Holland and today we're going to talk about fitness and I'm delighted to introduce Rob Denmark from Movement and Health Solutions. Welcome, Rob. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great that you're here. So I'm, I'm just going to read this out. Rob Denmark is the founder of Movement and Health Solutions. In 2010, after a decade of being obese, Rob decided he had had enough. He started circuit training and running, ditched the car and walked and rode his bike instead. After losing only five kilos, Rob started feeling and looking better. But the big difference came from how he felt. He was happier, more motivated to do things, was sleeping better, snoring less, and it was easier to get out of bed. He found that mentally and physically, he was in a much better mood for all aspects of his life. It was these feelings which inspired him to become a personal trainer. Rob thought to himself, if I could have a job that would help other people feel as good as I feel now, that would be awesome. The next day, he called the Australian Institute of Fitness and the rest is history. So, Rob, it's so great to have you here, and um, I can certainly vouch for um, movement and health solutions. And one of the great things for me is that when I became fitter and stronger, my confidence grew. So that was a really great bonus for me. So um, just in terms of people going through divorce and um, separation, there's obviously a lot of stress and anxiety involved, and normally we keep that stress and anxiety in our body. But they say to release that stress, we need to move our bodies. So have you got any comments to make about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, any sort of movement is, is excellent and important for relieving stress and mental health in general. Uh, and certainly doing some sort of dedicated exercise is definitely important uh, in terms of, of releasing stress. Mm -hmm. And there's a number of different reasons why there is benefits to that. Uh, but basically on a hormonal level, uh, exercise um, reduces um, adrenaline and cortisol, stress hormones, and it also increases um, endorphins, which are um, a mood elevators. Certainly, personally, I've found that um, exercise has been a great mood um, moderator or emotional moderator for me. Yeah. Um, so it's many cases I haven't necessarily felt like doing exercise, but it's actually the knowing the benefit. Oh, I know I'm going to feel better afterwards. Yeah. That actually is the 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 driving force to go. No, look, I'm going to do it even though I'm not in the mood now. Um, cause I know that if I'm not having a great day, it's at least going to keep me at that level, but more often than not, it's actually going to pick up my mood and make me feel better. Uh, and also those endorphins are natural painkillers as well. So there's benefits, um, uh, on a hormonal level from doing exercise, but there is, uh, one thing to keep in mind. It's not, okay, cool. I'm here that I'm supposed to do exercise. I'm just going to go out and thrash myself because more is better. Right. Um, it's important to realize that dose response is very, very important. And that the, the word stress, we use it, um, uh, but sometimes it's not defined clearly because there are multiple different types of stress. You know, there's emotional stress, there's um, nutritional stress, depending, depending on what the quality of food that you're eating. There's sleep stress, if you're sleep deprived. All of these things can impact our bodies and have and put stress on it and exercise is a stress as well it stresses our body yeah. so if you're already at a um if you've got a container which is basically how much stress let's just say the word stress you can handle mm -hmm. and it's already at 95 percent. you know it's already right up there and you hear go do exercise it's going to make you feel better and then you jump into a high intensity interval training session where there's or a boot camp style where there's someone saying, go, 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 go faster, more, 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 more. Mm -hmm. um, all that's going to do is actually increase your stress and then, you know, can have detrimental effects in that yeah. case. And I remember a client of mine uh, quite some time ago, maybe five or six years ago. And uh, we were, you know, she'd been training with me for a while and, 
uh, we're going through uh, some kettlebell swings, which can be quite a, you know, an intensive exercise. And we're going through a process of building up how many she could do. And we were at a certain weight and we've done it for a minute. And the next time she came along, it was a minute 15, a minute 30, minute 35, you know, and we kept building it up and it got to the point where I was, okay, the goal is two minutes straight kind of thing. Right. And I was getting to the minute 30 that she'd kind of done before. And I'm kind of giving her like, yeah, you're almost there. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And then she just, like she, I didn't pick up on it. She seemed okay from, from what I could tell. Um, but she just dropped the kettlebell, dropped to her knees and burst into tears. Oh. Um, and I didn't know, you know, <laughs> quite what had happened at that point. Um, and I took her aside and we had a, you know, a quiet moment. And it turned out that she, her marriage actually was ending. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, yeah, just me pushing her into that intensity did exactly that. It made that top blow and she, yes. and she let it all out. You know. Yes. Oh, that's um, a really good point. You know, it's something that I would never have considered. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, typically, lower types of intensity exercise are going to be better, generally speaking. Now, everybody's different, and it also depends how much exercise you actually do at the moment. Because mm -hmm. if you already do a massive amount of high intensity exercise, then the dose response for you might be fine to do that. If you don't do any exercise, then maybe just going for a walk around the block is that's where you are, you know. Yeah. But as a general global kind of thing, lower intensity types of exercises, and, you know, going for a walk, going for a bush walk, going for a swim, doing a yoga class, you know, not one that's a particularly intense, but something that's really good because it involves breathing, um, body weight movements, um, but yeah. Uh, and moving, moving as much as possible, for sure. And that's where the exercises that I do at MHS is excellent for those for this type of thing because it is movement-based. Um, yeah. It's task-orientated, so you're focusing on achieving something rather than just do 10 repetitive movements. Yeah. Um, and the flow sequences that we employ as well are, are good for, again, moving in that three-dimensional space and also keeping you present um, in, in, in the moment here. But um, yeah, I mean, they're all um, there are a few. I'll just mention a few other things if that's yeah. all right. Yeah, um, exercise wonderful. also, exercise also promotes, and you already touched on this yourself, building self confidence mm -hmm. and self image, and that that is really, really important just for anyone. Um, mm -hmm. But I imagine that someone who's going through a stressful time through separation and divorce, and those sorts of things, um, you know, self confidence could take a hit. Um, sure. and, and, and in terms of that mental health aspects, everything could become too hard and I can't do anything kind of thing. And just having achievement through exercise and, and seeing those little wins build that confidence back into to your life, which can flow on into, into other things. Um, it builds mental, physical, and emotional strength. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess a very simple way to put it is to be able to push through pain. Yes. That's important to you know, feel pain and, and, you know, listen to your body and those sorts of things. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, running on a dodgy knee and just forgetting about pain, but I mean the pain of just doing 10 repetitions of a particular exercise yeah. and your arms are starting to get sore because mm -hmm. they're getting tired, that yeah. sort of pain. Yes. And the, and the be able to push through that and say, I can do three more, even though it's uncomfortable, as yeah. opposed to it's getting tough now, I'm going to stop. Yes. So, so push through your comfort zone. Exactly. Through your yeah. comfort zone um, is probably a better way of putting it. And leaning into discomfort and being able to, to, to manage that is, is a massive one. Again, that you can learn an exercise that can then flow on into, into the rest of your life. Uh, and the other one is resilience, building resilience, both mentally and physically, which in my mind is the ability to bend without breaking. You Fantastic. Know? Um, That's a beautiful metaphor. Yeah. Thank we all need that. And and so um, in your work, are there particular places in the in the body where people tend to hold stress, or is there no given rule? And I'm just wondering if they like sometimes we think about our shoulders or our neck. You know, we they they say they say we tend to hold stress there, and then other yeah. exercises to do to relieve that. Uh, yes, I mean again. Um we kind of have to define the word stress in that yes we will hold stress in certain places of the body and depending mm -hmm. on what stresses that we're talking about um obviously I, I imagine in this case you're more talking about the emotional stress of going through divorce or separation yes. 
or yeah. emotional stress of something else are we going to store that in your body and where would, might that be yeah. um yes uh, and you touch it yourself like shoulders are a big one where people cause stress of uh, course where they hold stress mm -hmm. um the shoulders tend to yeah. to come up and those top muscles contract so they become very very tight mm -hmm. um and that affects your neck mm -hmm. and also up uh into your head as well so it can actually be a cause for headaches and migraines and things which if you think about it, if you're already under stress mm. and then you get a physical headache from it, then that can actually then become a negative cycle of the headache is then causing me more stress and the more stress is causing me more headache. Yeah. Um, um, so there's, there's definitely that. Um, chest tightness mm -hmm. um, can certainly be somewhere where we, we hold stress and can restrict our breathing or because of stress we might restrict our breathing which then means that we're feeling tighter in our mm -hmm. chest it can work both ways so certainly doing exercises for the across the upper back to strengthen those to improve posture and open up your chest and mobility exercises to open up the chest would help with that coming back sorry about the, the neck doing some some trigger point release or self myofascial release um, and mobility exercises so things to promote more movement in the area uh mm -hmm. would be optimal uh for that um, and another, another that's basically self-massage so same kind of thing if man i'm really tight i need someone to release the stress yeah. um that would be that and the other thing is belly you know yeah. where we can hold you know anxiety and fear um and no specific exercise for that in terms of physical uh like um yeah physical exercise in terms of um what we're what i do in terms yeah. of my sessions um like kettlebell swings or or bike yeah. exercises but certainly probably just general movement uh and breathing yeah. breathing would help with the chest as well but um doing um breath work or breathing exercises or meditations things like that can help a great deal um because you know you can hear oh breathe you just need to breathe better I've been doing that since I was born. I can breathe, you know, but there's actually lots of different ways of breathing. Um, yeah. And, you know, there's optimal ways to do it and there's suboptimal ways to do it as well. Yes. I know that um, when we are either angry or stressed or upset, we tend to have shallow breathing and it is high up in our chest. And so just yeah. a way of um, changing your um, nervous state, I guess, is to actually breathe lower into the belly and, and get that oxygen coursing through and slowing down your breath. Correct. Okay, great. And um, would you have any other recommendations for relieving stress? I know you touched on meditation. Um, is there anything else? Yeah, I, I, I think that um, and meditation is excellent. Some people find it easier to do than others and mm -hmm. if you're trying to do it or starting to do it i'd highly recommend getting some sort of assisted meditation like whether that's an app you know or mm -hmm. something you can listen to basically because if you just sit in a quiet place with nothing but your own thoughts if you're going through anxiety and stress like you know it's highly likely you're just going to be running through those negative thoughts and you're not yeah. going to really get any benefit out of it but if you can have someone whether it's someone you go to who helps you or an app or something that can help guide you through the process so that you can drop out of thought yes. and into feeling and that's going to be uh, the best way to do it as human beings we can't actually do both at the same time we're either thinking or we're feeling right um so if we're always in our heads then we can't connect in with our body and feel yeah. what's going on um and the flip side of that is true if we can get out of our heads focus on what we're feeling then we can't, our mind can't run rampant and, and go off into negative thought patterns. Um, and so there is a bit of a, an example. Uh, another thing of like the, uh, where that, sorry, another thing as well as meditation is specific breath work. And that might be a case of, hey, look, I'm just going to sit and focus on my breath for X amount of time. Uh, there are specific breath work practitioners that you can go and see that can help, um, uh, which can help clear uh subconscious emotional blockages and things like that um mm -hmm. which are very powerful tools and very excellent to do um but i guess touching on what i was talking about the thinking and feeling 
I can give you an example of that where um, what happens is if we're, if we're feeling an emotion and be it so stress or like, sorry, be it fear or anxiety or something like that. I'll just hold this up to see if we can see it. Can you see that? Okay. I can see a man. Yes. Yep. So basically if we were going to fear some fear and anxiety would feel a little bit here, kind of like in our solar plexus in the middle of yeah. our body, a bit of tightness. And what that will do is because what, what a lot of people recognize is the thoughts that will create some thoughts. Mm -hmm. And what we will do then is we'll run a movie in our mind. Yeah. Now, if it's fear and anxiety that we're feeling, the movie is probably going to be a horror film, you mm -hmm. know, and we're going to awfulize things and think about, you know, worst case scenarios. Yes. What that then does, because we're thinking all this awful stuff, is it then sends a signal back into our body and it makes the fear and anxiety bigger. Yes. Now that we're feeling even more fear and even more anxiety, it comes back up to our head. And yeah. all of a sudden we're running doomsday to the sequel and it's yeah. twice as worse. Yes. <laughs> the same thing happens. It comes here. All of a sudden there's more stress, but more fear, more anxiety. It comes up and it's become a trilogy now. Yes. And it's, it's beyond the worst case scenario that you thought mm -hmm. in this massive cycle that's happened. That's basically how a panic attack happens. Right. Okay. The thoughts feed the feelings, feed the thoughts, feel the feelings. Yes. Now, the way to prevent this from happening is to address the feeling, mm -hmm. ideally as soon as possible, when it's small. Mm -hmm. And so basically the best way that we can do that is to breathe. Yes. Now, our respiratory system and our heart are um, you know, closely linked. If we can breathe, we can access our heart, and we can allow ourselves to feel whatever it is that we're feeling. So many of us yeah. uh, have been conditioned to ignore our feelings and not feel them. Um, but if we can drop out of our head using breath work or meditation or something and feel and, and drop into feeling mm -hmm. and then say, okay, I'm feeling some anxiety in my body and just allow it to be there. Accept that you're feeling anxious. It doesn't yes. even matter if you're not sure why. Yes. Accept that it's there and allow yourself to feel anxious. Find a safe place to do it and just allow yourself to feel that emotion. And if you can allow that emotion to be there and feel it, it's actually quite possible that it's just going to release in that moment and it's going to go if you yeah. let it. Yes. Um, and then it won't come up and drive thoughts and then come down and come yes. bigger and bigger, you know. It's breaking now, that negative um, loop, isn't it? Exactly. And, I mean, that might not be what a process you just do once. I'm not suggesting that, you know, someone who's watching this goes, oh, there's the answer. I'll do it once and then yes. it's, it's one no, and done. practice. Yeah, and you might be doing it, you know, multiple times a day initially, mm. but it might be something that you just do as a part of your day. It becomes a, a habit that you just do once a day in the morning, you know, or, or what have you. It's always good to breathe, check in. What am I feeling? And and allowing yourself, give yourself the time to feel it. Fantastic. Oh, Rob, they're just such wonderful tips. Thank you. So I believe you've got some exercises um, to demonstrate for us. Yes. Um, so as part of my, uh, my program, one of the things I, I, um, that my clients get is my Unlock Your Body program, which is eight body weight exercises that are designed to get your ankle complex, your hips and your thoracic spine to move as well as they can. And the reason um, though we're picking those three areas is that they're the areas of the body that should move the most. Mm. And when they don't, they can then put stress um of a different kind on other areas of the body so wow. if your ankles aren't working as well as they could it's going to put stress on your knees and you're going to then have knee pain if the hips aren't taking as much responsibility as they should your lower back is going to suffer thoracic spine and 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 um and shoulder girdle if that's not working well then that can put stress on your neck and cause pain there so that's the reason why we get those three areas to to work well because if we can optimize their movement everything else functions at a better rate and niggles and pains and injuries tend to clear up um and the better the more you can uh, easily you can move the easier it is the more likely you are to do it because it's enjoyable fantastic um oh, so i'm going to show you through sorry i was just going to say i'm just going to show you a few examples of a couple of those exercises that's great thank you so much only quite small on that from my perspective so i can't can you see me okay if i'm standing i, I can see you very well okay perfect all right, so uh, the first exercise um, is called a step over squat. And so for this one, we'd have 
Um, I'm having my right foot pointing straight ahead and I'm going to try and keep that foot as still as possible um, throughout the exercise. I'm then take, going to take my other foot, the left foot, and step toe in, turning it in as much as I can. And that may be different for you. I'm then going to take the foot I've just moved, step around so the feet are roughly at 90 degrees now, push my knees out as wide as I can and go as low as I comfortably can into that squat. Sitting nice and upright. Standing tall, then we'll repeat that. Back into that toe in step, toe out and knees wide. Now for someone else, they might not be able to go as low into the squat, might be more of a bobbing action. And they might not be able to toe in quite as much as me. So they might only just turn slightly turn the toe in. That's fine. You're just doing the range of motion that's comfortable for you. And so this one promotes a lot of good movement through the arch of the foot and the ankle, internal rotation through the hip. And as we're dropping down, we're opening up the hips as well and sitting into a nice upright postural position. So that's hitting those three areas. Um, it's stretching and mobilizing quite a few areas. And a lot of these exercises, they might not look all that challenging, um, but they certainly um, can bring your body temperature up and have you working hard, but it's still considered a low, lower intensity type of exercise. All right, uh, second one, lateral lunge with a crossover step. The feet will start together. You're gonna step to the side, trying to keep both feet pointing straight ahead as you do so, pushing the hips back as far as you can and reaching down toward that stepping foot. Coming back, you're gonna cross the legs over, arms out, and then rotate in the same direction that you just stepped. So I'm stepping to my left-hand side, which means I'm also rotating to the left-hand side. As you do this, you're gonna feel a stretch up the inside of the leg. You might feel the butt working on that stepping leg. And as we're rotating, we're promoting more rotation through that upper body, which is gonna help with that upper body posture and in terms of opening up the chest, which we mentioned before in terms of chest tightness and, uh, and potentially helping those tight shoulders. So for those two, I've only just shown one side, you would then obviously do the same thing on the other side. So you're doing both sides of the body. All right, there's also, um, we do quite a lot of ground to standing movements, um, which are excellent for strength, fitness, mobility, a whole range of different things. And they're actually really good for longevity. Um, statistically speaking, they, if you can continue to do these, you will live longer. The reason being that you need a good amount of hip mobility in order to do them and you need a good amount of leg strength in order to do them. Uh, so the first one is a fairly simple one that I might show you it's side on, which is a, a stand to crawling movement. Feet are in a squatting position, round about shoulder width apart. Squatting down as low as you can with your heels flat to the ground. Now, if you can sit all the way down, brilliant. If you're only getting to here with your heels flat, that's also fine. It's as low as you can go. And then you're going to rock forward, bringing your hands to the ground, walking out with your hands until your body is straight. Bend your knees as you walk backwards with your hands, getting the heels flat to the ground once again, looking ahead and stand tall. So if I show you that again, squatting down, crawling forward, crawling back, heels flat and stand tall. Okay, this one can be quite demanding of your muscles. It can, it is quite metabolic, so it can get your heart rate up. So in terms of that dose response that I was talking about, uh, a lot of the time you may just have to just, you know, take note of how you're feeling. If you are feeling your heart rate is very high and you're short on breath, um, that's not to say you can't necessarily do this exercise, but you might just slow it down. You might take a bit of rest in between each one you might do less of them, you know, instead of doing 10 in a row, you might only do three or four. Um, and the other ground to standing is a, a Spider-Man lunge to stand. And uh, I'll probably better off showing you this from side on as well, having the hands and the feet together. Uh, you'd step one leg forward as far as you're able to, making sure that you get your heel flat to the ground. You're then gonna use that leg to stand up. So you're more or less standing up with only one leg. You're then gonna step backwards, leaving the same leg forward. It was, that was the one that uh, 
you use to stand up. You then bring that leg back and swap to the other side. So I'm stepping up with my right leg and I'm leaving my right leg forward when I come down. Left leg forward, I leave that left leg there and then bring it back. That's a great one again, leg strength and hip mobility. That's a fantastic one. That's, uh, that's it from the Unlock Your Body program exercises. I could give you a quick demo of a flow sequence with a Viper um, and, and some of the benefits of that. Do we have enough time for that? Or yeah, sure. Be... Yeah. So this is a Viper. Um, and you can do this with medicine balls or dumbbells or even just body weight flow sequences. Um, but the, a flow sequence is basically a number of different exercises which are then attached to one another to create a continuous flow of movement. So this one is just three exercises where I'm stepping forward into the first movement, stepping sideways into the second, bringing the Viper across and then rotating it around my body for the third one. And I can then repeat the exact same thing on the other side. And basically I'm just trying to do it nice and smoothly, nice and rhythmically, continuous breathing. And essentially I can keep doing this because there's no beginning and end to the repetition. I can just keep doing this as long as my fitness <laughs> holds out. But this is great for mobility, great for fitness, great for full body strength and creating that resilience in the body I was talking about because we're um, putting, again, I'm using that word stress through the body in an infinite number of different directions and ways. Um, and um it's also uh as research has actually been shown that it improves cognitive brain function as well because we're building new movement in the brain with these flow sequences and because you have to kind of keep track of where you are you can only really think of two things what am i doing right now and what's the next movement that i'm about to do so it's too hard to think about that thing that's going to happen tomorrow or even the thing that's going to happen when I leave the gym or finish this workout. Because as soon as you think, oh, what was that thing? You lose yourself in the sequence and you, <laughs> you, you then have to restart from the beginning. So you're too busy focusing on being in the here and now and being present um, uh, to, to worry about the rest of that stuff. And that's also really important in terms of stress management and mental health. Fantastic. Rob, thank you so much. Um, that was really great. And so if people want to find out more about you, how do they do that? Um, probably the easiest way is to jump onto our Facebook page at Movement and Health Solutions. Um, uh, you can also contact me directly um, through my email, which is rob, R-O-B, at movementandhealth.com.au. Um, yeah. They'd be the two easiest ways. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. No, it's my pleasure.